Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. Keeping you in the fast track with daily Tesla and electric vehicle news. I'm Mikey G, and it's Monday, February 28th. Tesla has started to offer free supercharging in several countries around Ukraine for people fleeing following the Russian invasion. When regions of the world are hit by natural disasters, Tesla has offered free supercharging for them to give them one less thing to worry about and also helping them get away from danger. In an email to local owners, Tesla has announced that they are making several supercharger stations near the border free for both Tesla and non-Tesla electric vehicles. It's actually the first time that free supercharging has been active for non-Tesla owners. Despite not officially selling cars in the Ukraine, there are many Teslas in the country when they decide to import them in individually. Tesla doesn't officially operate in the Ukraine, but it has been rumored to be entering the market soon, although that effort may be delayed. Tesla is reportedly finally going to receive final approval to start production at Gigafactory Berlin after months of delays. German newspaper Tagesspiegel reports that Brandenburg Prime Minister met with a special task force to the Tesla project last week and that the team managed to agree on the environmental approval. This approval is expected to be coming by the end of the week and will enable Teslas to start production of the Model Y vehicles for customer deliveries. That's expected to commence this March. Tesla has officially started rolling out its full self-driving beta in Canada marking the first official international expansion of the driver assist system. Musk recently said that Tesla has been internationally testing the full self-driving beta in Canada with about 60 vehicles, but now they're opening it up to some of the selected public. Of course, access to the program is going to be contingent upon one's Tesla safety score, which has now opened up for assessment starting over the weekend. If the driver's personal score becomes high enough, they can have access to the self-learning program. Hackers are ramping up their effort to disrupt Russia amid its invasion of Ukraine. Russian electric vehicle owners outside Moscow reported that charging stations operated by a Russian power company was shut down in an apparent hack. The display message on the unit now shows an error message that, when interpreted, reads, quote, Putin is a d***head. Glory to Ukraine. While it's doubtful that the charging inconvenience will make a big impact on the leaders of governments, it does highlight a security risk for charging infrastructure. Panasonic announced that it has greenlit a new investment to start production of Tesla's 4680 battery cell by the end of the fiscal year, ending in March 2024. Tesla is preparing to start deliveries of its first vehicle using the new battery cell, the tabless battery with a bigger format and chemistry. And now Panasonic is offering to help with more production. Tesla has previously announced that they will take all the production and materials that they can get their hands on. Panasonic CEO Yuki Kusumi said that it is prepared to make a large investment in the new production, and they have confirmed previous reports that the production facility that they're now making will consist of two new production lines. Tesla previously stated that the chip shortage would be the biggest constraint this year, and the battery production is forecasted to be the next bottleneck. The California Energy Commission, or CEC, published a recent docket recommending widespread adoption of ISO 15118 chargers in order to support current and upcoming electric vehicle features. Some of these features include vehicle-to-grid technology. While the charging ports themselves have thinned in terms of options, the technology coursing through them continues to evolve. The CEC describes the chargers they recommend as the following, quote, Any charger with a J1772 or CCS connector that is capable of powerline communications as outlined in ISO 15118-3, secure management and storage of keys and certificates, TLS version 1.2, additional support for TLS 1.3 or subsequent versions is also recommended, and connecting to a backend network. In today's community comment, Martin Wood says, quote, I can't believe original Tesla Roadsters are fetching so much money at auction when the battery tech will be on its last legs. Unless you live near Gruber Motors, you won't be able to keep your Roadster running, unless you can junk the old battery system and somehow install a newer one. Yeah, Martin, that's actually a good point. Those batteries are not going to last forever. I'm facing the same problem in my Nissan Leaf. The Roadster was a converted Lotus, as I'm sure most of you know, which among other things, they crammed the batteries into the car wherever it made the most sense. I can't imagine it'll be easy to change the batteries out of that thing, and it certainly would require some software adjustments. Although, 
If someone has that much money to buy a car of that kind of value, they can probably afford to rebuild the battery pack. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. We also have an audio version on your favorite podcast player. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.